Scrappy Peanut writes, How can I focus on stamping using the principles of design? I basically just need some inspiration to start incorporating my stamps into my scrapbook pages. Glitter Girl, can you help Scrappy Peanut strategize smashing stamping? Of course I can. Of course, there are already quite a few different resources on stamping for scrapbooking here at Two Peas in a Bucket. That includes the scrapbook stamping free class and the more um, technique-based uh, scrapbook stampers workshop which is also available here by Jen Gallagher and then there's also this idea of design and since you asked specifically about incorporating stamps into scrapbook pages using design principles I'm going to pick up on the same design principles that are highlighted in the two piece series design school and those are there are six of them balance unity emphasis repetition rhythm and proportion now I'm not going to cover all six today but those are the six that are in the series and I'll link to those um, underneath the video and over at two peas so that you can have a look and um, if you're looking for more design principle discussion you'll find lots there I'm going to do two pages with you today a little bit different because I've already got each of them just slightly started and then I'm going to look at those design principles and stamps for the first one I'm using different stamps from Studio Calico including um, this one is a uh, exclusive to two peas in a bucket and then these three are uh, from other Studio Calico collections like Heyday and for paper I'm using a little bit of Studio Calico this one is from the Studio Calico Abroad collection. And then these others are from Midway by October Afternoon. Love this um, mix of colors in this interesting kind of Tetris inspired uh, stripe pattern, which also has lots of nice um, numbers and letters on the back to cut out. And I'm using this cream and turquoise print for my background, which also has a multicolored chevron on the back. And then I'm going to be throwing in some different little border elements from this one called Duck Pond, which is also from Midway, and has that uh, turquoise and white stripe on the back. Okay, so that's where um, I'm starting, and I have five pictures for this particular layout. Four of them were taken on my normal SLR camera and one of them on my phone. And I decided I wanted to scrapbook them all together. And recently, Jill Sprott put a, pic, uh, put a layout in the garden that uses a whole bunch of paired landscape prints, small like this. And she's kind of got lots of them going down the middle of the page. And I absolutely loved it. So I wanted to try that technique. So I took four of those normal 4 by 6 landscape pictures and shrunk them down. So I have... Um, two pairs of those and then um, a, a shot that I filtered in a million different apps on my phone just for fun to put on Instagram and I printed that at just shy of four inches square. So I have my single colored print for the background and then this multicolored stripe to balance things off. So that brings in all the different colors but I still have a, a really solid bright grounding color. And then I want to focus on emphasis on this page, the design concept of adding emphasis. So I want to do as much as I can to add emphasis to this photo, which includes all of us. And, and then these photos are what I would consider supporting images. So one thing I've done to add emphasis is to print this image larger than these. And it's a different shape. Because it's a square and because it has that black frame in the editing of the photo, it's going to catch your eye more than the four smaller photos that don't have the black frame. So that starts to add emphasis. I also have added emphasis by repeating that square shape on a large mat of pattern paper behind that image, which these don't have. They're not going to have a mat. They're just going to be sat on top on their own. So that's adding more emphasis to this picture. But I also then want to start adding um, more embellishment and emphasis using stamps. And I want all the emphasis to go toward that large focal point photo. I'm going to go ahead and get these elements stuck down. I want to add a little bit of border work um, above and below this striped pattern so that it's not just kind of floating on its own, make it a little bit heavier on the page and have a bit more detail. And then I'll start stamping different things that I can use to add more emphasis to that larger photo. So I've adhered everything except this photo and I haven't, it, I haven't put adhesive on the 
top and bottom edges of this so that I can add some border pieces. So having a look at this um, sheet, before I put them side by side, the turquoise stars grab my eye first, but then I'd just be putting turquoise on turquoise. So better if I can find something that has a little more contrast. So I think I'm going to go with this wider piece with the stripes and the pink stars. And then I also want um, something to go at the bottom. So I'm thinking maybe the gray polka dots would be better for grounding that at the bottom. So I'm going to cut those two strips, just the full 12 inch width, and attach them to the paper. In order to get the height of the stars high enough so that this piece wasn't exactly in line with this box, I've had to pick it up a little bit and there's a gap there. So I'm just going to cover that gap with some hot pink polka dot washi tape. just following the pattern there to get that pretty much straight in theory and then I can just tuck the edges onto the other side and then I can add a little more adhesive here where I'd left that unattached and now I can start to look at how I can use the stamps to bring emphasis in. Now I know I want this photo to go roughly about there and I have a few other things that I want to include. I um, have this cupcake die cut from My Mind's Eye and I'm thinking that it could become part of my title. I also have a little glassine envelope and or vellum envelope and I wanted to stamp on this and put something inside with a bit of color. So I need to do the stamping first obviously otherwise it's going to be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to um, actually leave the, the side that's, that makes it look like an envelope, I'm going to leave that on the back. So I'm going to have the, the clean side without any seams or anything on the front. And I wanted to start with this lovely little stamp in this Studio Calico collection which lets you personalize the Keep Calm and Carry On logo to whatever you might um, want for your page. So I'm going to start with that. I was just showing you that by the, the clear stamp, this is how I always try to see if um, what I'm stamping on is going to be the right sort of size and proportion. And then I'll just use black ink for this. And then of course with the clear block I can see where everything has been inked. And it does take a little bit to dry, unless you're using stays on, it takes a couple seconds to dry on the vellum because it's a, a glossy paper. So I'm just going to set that aside while I work on what's going to go inside. And I wanted to use, um, it's, it, it's a party, the pictures are, are from a birthday party, so I wanted to add um, kind of that party feel, so I thought I would go with confetti of these other pieces. So I'm just going to use um, different punches to make something to go inside. Now with confetti, you can avoid, of course just use um, a circle punch, a hole punch, you can use um, a crocodile because that has the two different sizes of circles. But one thing that will help get through a bunch of confetti quicker is if you use a border punch or any punch design that has lots and lots of circles or whatever um, other shape you want. There's an American Crafts border punch with tiny little stars that makes little star confetti. So I can just pull apart those pieces, these pieces that I don't want and be left with all these circles. And one thing I try to do, and it's a little easier with the border punch than it is with any other design, uh, is to keep the patterns the right way up because I want the colors that are on the sides of the pattern I've used on my layout. So for example, this color isn't really in what I've chosen for the layout, but these colors are. So if I can use the border punch, the pieces don't bounce around as much on the table, so it's a little easier to keep the color scheme uh, in one direction, in theory. It doesn't work out perfectly, but it works a little easier. 
certain shapes add emphasis and direct the eye more um, than others and arrows are certainly one of those or anything that has a point to it like a chevron that's pointing in the right direction or a banner that points towards something and in this case it's quite an obvious and um, a literal get your eye to go there because this shape is both pointed and says look at this so I'm going to start with that stamp my next little area or next little piece of the embellishment and I've just pulled out a die cut that has the right colors but it's been in my collection a while and I haven't really well I haven't used it and it's in a set of loved themed cards from Ellie Studio and I just decided maybe I would use just small part of it and rather than it be a love note kind of thing it would work well with this color so um, just stamp this in black on that pattern and then be able to cut it out So I want to include some of that turquoise houndstooth and then some just the white with the turquoise lines. And then I'll just cut this out with scissors. So pretty much as simple as you can get for making stamped embellishments, just take a stamp that will direct your eye to a certain element of the page that you want people to notice, be that your photos or your title or your journaling. And that way you've got another element pointing in the right direction to get the idea across that you want. And then that's just going to throw in a little bit more of the turquoise and just um, more than stamping it on plain white paper. You certainly could stamp it on plain white or plain turquoise or anything else, but um, I do like to use little pieces like this where I look at them in my stash and think I've had it a while and I haven't used it how can I think of a different way to use them than what's quite literal from from the way it was marketed across the different designs also had other similar shapes so arrows with words in them so I've stamped all of those they're from three different sets and um, but that way I have three different arrows from that same die cut and I still have more of this left if I want to include some of that somewhere else on the page so I have those three that I can make point toward the picture and so I started to add the photo to this block and I was a little worried that there's not an um, there's not something bright around it. So I'm going to add a little washi tape frame underneath the photo. So I've started by just adding one horizontal piece to the bottom. And then I'm just guessing at the amount. And then oops, pull the photo aside. And I'm just making a little box. And because it's washi tape, you can pick it up and move it again if you need to. I'll try that over the top. And if you end up with different layers in places that you don't like, you can just get rid of it. So I'm going to start with that on top of the cupcake. If I decide I don't like it there, I can always move it and put it underneath. So then I use the photo again to see for the placement. So I want this about here. I can just... And I like that with washi tape, it looks quite nice to not have it be a precise box. So it's just something different than a paper photo mat, essentially. So now I can adhere my photo on top of that box, and I get this mat of the brightly colored polka dot. And I can start to add my other elements, my stamped elements, to add emphasis to that photo. So I want to use the three of these. I want to make sure that I don't cover up anybody in the picture. And I have two of these are similar shapes and one is different. So I'm thinking that it will work best with either the, the one that's different on top or in the middle, but it would look awkward on the bottom because it's smaller. Stamped arrows bringing emphasis to the photo. I've got washi tape bringing that color and emphasizing this box shape. And then I'm going to build my title and some embellishment here. So I have my little envelope of confetti that's all sealed up and ready to go. And I want that to sit next to the cupcake. Maybe even tuck it under the cupcake here. And then I want to fill in the lettering, 
the lettering with the or the blank in the lettering. So I'm going to use some letter stickers for that. And of course, you could always just write um, on the line in your own handwriting. So I'm going to see if I can make these little letter stickers fit. That's the idea. These are um, the sherbet color from October afternoon in the mini market letters. And one of the reasons I wanted to include the, the Keep Calm stamp is because this is such a, a phrase of right now, um, because you see it everywhere right now in the, in the last kind of year or two, and, and you see it customized all the time. So these are really current pictures, and I think that the keep calm thing is certainly a trend, but it will go away in the future. And then where it appears in my album will be the right spot in time for when this was really popular. Um, so that's kind of my, my thought on the, that little concept. Now I have a good space for my title to run here. And then I can start to look for a few other places where I can add a little bit of embellishment and bring in my stamps to finish the design. At this point, there's quite a lot going on. I've got the title on, I've added the date, I threw in a little label sticker to kind of bridge a gap here between um, the photo and these embellishments. And I'm planning to put my writing here. So I just want to come back around this photo and see if there's any other little place that something could be useful. And what I was thinking was sometimes you get stamps that are sentiments that work really well for a card, but you can also put them on scrapbook pages that are the right theme. So I'm thinking that this happy birthday stamp is just what um, this would, this little corner would need. And then I want to put a little tin pin in the middle there between the date and the stamp. So I'm just going to be stamping that straight onto the page. So ink that up. I'm still using black. Everything I'm stamping on this particular page is all in black ink. Just wanted to do really simple stamping um, so that you can see how easy it really can be. And then I'll pop my little tin pin on top here. And that gives me this tiny little gap here, which will be good for a little rhinestone or gem or, well, rhinestones and gems, pretty much the same thing. And um, a little something though. So, oh, in fact here, here's a little resin flower in the right color. So that matches the lettering and fits in that little gap. It's just a little prima flower. Um, so I think it's time for me to go ahead and add my writing up here, and I might include a little um, stamp or two in with the words, but then I think it'll be time to call this one done. In addition to the writing, I've added just a few little turquoise rhinestones around the layout to just give it a little bit more party sparkle. And then I want to add one final stamp here in with the writing, and that's my favorite one from this uh, set, which just is a nice little word block that says documented. I think it's a really easy, nice stamp to go with journaling to add on a little tab here and there. It's a great size and it's really easy to read. So I'm just going to stamp that right at the top here. I like that it looks a little bit office style like one of those little stampers, especially if you put it red on an angle over the end of your journaling, things like that. So that's going to be this one done, all sorts of really simple stamping, just one color flat on the page and cut out or stamped right onto the background. And really, really easy to do. All you need is this stamp, an ink pad, and an acrylic block. And then just mixed in with my normal scrapbooking style to add emphasis, to follow that design principle of what can I do to add emphasis to the thing I want your eye to take in the most. So there's lots of things going on, but I want you to go toward that big photo. So I put everything around there and make as much point to that as possible. Now I want to look um, just quickly at a second layout with a, a second design principle. So we'll switch it up and have a little second page for today. Returning to those six design principles of balance, unity, emphasis, repetition, rhythm, and proportion. It's repetition that comes most easily to stamps because you don't need more than one thing. With embellishments, you have to search for different things that might 
be repetitive or you'd have to have more than one pack to have the same exact thing repeat. But with stamps, you get that design and you can make as many as you want. So repetition is a really natural design principle to use with your stamps. So I'm starting with two different um, types of pattern paper here. This top and bottom papers are from the Amy Tangerine Ready Set Go collection and these two in the middle are by Jelly Bean Soup. I just wanted to point out that Jelly Bean Soup does really lovely rich blues and the back of this chevron is a, a mini polka dot and I just find that I'm always looking for a really nice rich blue and it's a really hard color to find so if you have that same problem when you're looking through your collection I would pick up some of the papers from Jelly Bean Soup also this um, heart shape is called um, let's see what it's called it's from the sweet and sour soup collection it's called sour salt and it, there there's just a little bit left of it in the store because it's last year's collection but it's something ridiculous like 80% off right now so if you like hearts and you like these colors or if you like ready and um, ready set go and you want more colors that match well this one is a good one and the other side has a um, typography print so um, just a heads up on that if you like that particular pattern. So this one, I have um, just a single 4x6 photo that's really quite old and it's been on a bulletin board when I was a kid and things like that. So this is going to be just a single photo layout and I'm going to go ahead and add the picture here. So I've stacked up two boxes of pattern paper. So one of them is, um, I think it's one's an eight inch square and the other one is either nine or eight and a half, just so that they're a bit layered. And then a four and a half by six and a half of that chevron multicolored print. Just stacked at angles so that I have that little look of a different stack of, or a stack of different papers. And I have a couple pieces um, cut out to add for journaling and things like that. This one is a cut out from that True Story Ready Set Go paper from Amy Tangerine and um, I've been cutting that piece apart and I'm almost down to the end. This is all I have left. I've used all the rest. And then this one is a Jelly Bean Soup cutout card. This is the rest of the sheet here and that's called Bite Size Bits. It's available in the Neapolitan Bean Bisque um, collection pack and also as an individual sheet. So what I liked about this was um, the colors were a good match, but also that this box happens to fit really nicely in between there. So I could overlap these two. Now obviously the colors are repeating. The yellow picks up back here and here again. The blue shows up several times. But in design um, elements or in patterns, this chevron pattern is already starting to repeat. So I have a chevron pattern paper here. I have a different twist on a chevron in this pattern. And then this design element in this card also includes a chevron. Well, another element I could stamp would be a chevron piece. And this is a really good stamp set um, if you're looking to build a few, like a small collection of things that, that you'll use time and time again. This is a really good one. It's um, the stamp set's called Jared. It's by American Crafts. And and um, it has four stamps, but there are four stamps that are really versatile and you can use them a lot. So this grid, you can use as one grid, you can cut it smaller, you can repeat it so you have a whole um, border or whole area of a page that's gridded. It makes a really nice background for other stamped elements. So say you stamp something, um, a really colorful butterfly, because I like butterflies, so why not? And, and then you want to go, go put it on a card or in an, ele an element of a page. And the butterfly is so lovely that um, if you just put it straight on the paper, it doesn't get the, the weight in the design that it needs. So you can add something like this in a solid color, just stamped in a solid color dye ink behind it, and put the butterfly on top, and then it will have that contrast. So anything, um, you could put flowers, sentiments, all sorts of things just cut out and put on top of the, that stamped background. It's really, really versatile. You can also use it in a scrapbook page with smaller pieces. You could take this small a small element like a punch shape and repeat it on each time the um, the lines in the grids cross. So you can use that re um, repetitive element with the grid. Um, so really versatile big stamp there. You also get a nice bold thanks stamp which is great for cards and um, I have a bunch of thank you cards to get in the post today so I think um, we never really end up with enough thank you cards in my world. Um, and then this nice chevron border, this is all one piece and that's the one I'm going to use here in just a minute. 
and a little round um, stamp that's kind of compass shaped that just makes a really good fill in so you can go in and um, stamp it in different places so I'm going to use it on top of these little circles just here and there to add a little bit more detail so come back to that one in a minute I'm gonna start with the chevron and stamp just a few pieces so that I have um, different elements I can cut out. Now one thing I could do would be to take one of these colors and stamp it on white um, so that I could bring in that color. But I still like the idea of stamping in black. I'm going to be doing my writing in black. And I like the, the idea of bringing in some of the navy polka dot. So I'm going to try the black on the navy and see how that comes out. It may or may not be perfect. So I'm going to have a go. I'm just using black dye ink. And then I'll stamp it on there. Oh, I need to go this way. And then cut this piece out. Bring my layout back. Just going to make sure I cut out the piece so that it's so the points at the beginning and end are in the shape and otherwise it's very simple, just two lines to cut it out. And so this is a piece then that I can add in to repeat that same shape, that same design um, of the chevron, but just in a different way. So I can bring this in here so it's connecting with that other one that's a bit more, because this is a bit more abstract chevron. And I think I like the idea of doing three of those there in a row. So the chevron stamp adds repetition not only because it's something that's already included on the layout through the different pattern papers, but also because I've stamped three of them to take up that space in the center. Then I've gone ahead and added my title with different sets of thickers and the date with um, those same thickers plus a label sticker and repeated these little adhesive pearls, some here with the chevron and some at the date. Then I added my right all the way around the largest box instead of having another boxy element for um, my journaling. I just thought it would be easier and a little change of pace when you turn the pages in the album. Um, it is one that you would have to actually turn your head around to read all the way around the box, but it's quite a simple story, so um, I figured that would be easy enough to follow. Now to add a little finishing touch, I am going to do some stamping that's not in black. How exciting! <laughs> I'm going to use a, an ink color that is pretty close to the little orange and um, the heart in that pattern paper. So I'm using this little circle stamp and I can tell from the, um, the stamp sheet that it's going to be a good match for the circles on the pattern paper. So this is chicken feed. Unfortunately they're not producing the Jenny Bolin Ranger inks anymore um, but I know a lot of you already have them so um, possibly still useful. Otherwise, there are lots of other different kinds and brands and colors and all sorts of things. Different stamps for, or different colors for different jobs. So I just want to um, pick just a few of these randomly in that background paper and stamp this over the top. Now one thing that works really well is to make sure you choose some that go off the edge of the page. Otherwise, um, it looks a little too obvious that you added them yourself. And having a few off the edge makes it look like the pattern was always meant to be that way. Now if I'd been smart, I would have also done this before I put the boxes of pattern and then I could have a few here or there. But at this point, I think that's a little bit of a risk for me. So I'll just take some that are near. Um, this one needs just a little more in this corner. There. 
it's still really simple just stamping straight on the page but you could adapt to different things so say you wanted to add more sparkle and you didn't want more gems or loose glitter you could use a, in, that same stamp with embossing ink and embossing powder with a glitter in it or a pearlescent to it all sorts of different ways you can just take one stamp and repeat it through a design to make a big difference a nice finishing touch please check out the links that I'll put below the video here on YouTube and on two peas so that you can find all the different um, resources we have on those two concepts. There's quite a bit on stamping on scrapbook pages and there's also a whole series on design concepts for your layouts. So between the two I think you'll get your question answered. And for everybody I hope you'll join me in this week's challenge and that is to use a stamp or more, more one or more on a scrapbook page then upload it to the gallery and share it with everybody. Thanks so much for watching. And the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.